Okay, so today we're going to talk about the chain rule. Right. Now the chain rule comes into play when we're talking about composite functions. Okay, composite functions like a function of another function. So this is a function of g of x. So this is 4x. Right? Another function of another function which is a function of another function. So f is a function of g, g is a function of h. So you can write this as f or g o h x. So these are composite functions and that's when the chain rule comes into play when we talk about these composite functions. For example, if I have sine of x squared minus 1, this is a function of a function. Let's say this is a function g. Then y is nothing but sine of g. Okay. And we have to find dy by dx. So I can write this as dy by dg times dg by dx. Can't I? Because this will cancel out and you get back this. So I have simply rewritten this as dy over dg times dg over dx. Now dy over dg is simply the derivative of y with respect to g which, will, which is cos g times dg by gx which is the derivative of g where g is x squared minus 1 with respect to x right and this is nothing but dy over dx so this comes out to be dy over dx is cos g which is cos x squared negative 1 times the derivative of this with respect to x which is 2x so this is your answer right let's take another example let's say we have cos of e to the power x plus 1 okay so this is a function of another function let's call it let's call it u so y is cos u and you're asked to find out the differential coefficient that is dy by dx so you define y as cos u then dy by dx can be written as dy over du times du over dx and this is exactly what the chain rule is okay now dy over du is the derivative of y with respect to u which is a negative sine u and du over dx is the derivative of u with respect to x which is the derivative of u that is e to the, e to the x plus 1 with respect to x since u is e to the power x plus 1 so this is negative sine e to the x plus 1 times the derivative e to the power x gives back e to the power x derivative of constant is 0 so this is your answer okay and next time you can do it without taking u let's take this for example let's take a log of x squared plus x plus 2 so dy over dx is 1 over this thing inside which is this times the derivative of this thing inside which is 2x plus 1 which is the answer okay so what I basically did was instead of taking this whole thing as a function let's say u and then writing y equals l and u and then applying the chain rule straight away imagine this whole thing and then differentiated it okay let's do it this way also so y is l and u with dy over dx is what it's it's dy over du times du over dx isn't it dy over du is 1 over u which is exactly what I did here this whole thing is u okay 
this whole thing is u times the derivative of u with respect to its that's exactly what I did here which is 2x plus 1 so that's what the chain rule is and you know it gives us the scope of differentiating a lot many functions let's say you have functions like these take this over e to the power x plus 1. Now this is a function you have to use here the product as well as the quotient rule as well as the chain rule. Right? Or I can only use the product and the chain rule rewriting the function as something like this. Okay? Now let's apply the product rule. I take the first two functions, multiply it by the derivative of the third, which is negative sine x plus 1, but this is a 1. Now the derivative of this is 1, so not a problem. And then you add and take the second and the third function as it is. derivative of the first which is 2x plus the first and the third function as it is derivative of the second which is e to the e to the negative x plus 1 now the derivative of this okay using the chain rule which gives you a negative 1 and that's the answer you can always simplify that so that's the application of chain rule